I bought these shoes. Ridiculous, I know. And I wanted to turn them into these. Still ostentatious, but much less pimpish. So we went to one of the best leather artisans in the tri-state area, Leather Spa. This is David. His team fixed my shoes, and this is their story. Hey, how are you? My name is David Mesquita. I'm the co-owner of Leather Spa Shoe Repair Handbag Repair Facility here in Long Island City, Queens, New York. And welcome to my spot. Let's have a look around. You know, I am Portuguese born, and definitely I wasn't like a guy like to go too much to the school. It was that little routine that bothers me a little bit. I'm more manual. I, I feel like I was born free and uh, unhappy. I did a trip to uh, New York City to 1971. Very few people remember that at that time, but the shoe repairs was on the basement, very dirty, not light, dark. All kind of fancy lady, as you could see on the streets. Uh, all kind of these fancy ladies like uh, going to that little place to get the shoes fixed. So I decided I can't learn nothing in New York City uh, for my business. I have to go to New York City to teach, bring the technology I have already for, uh, for New York. Yeah, I mean, we handle Chanel, Gucci, Ferragamo, you know, Fendi, YSL. I mean, there's a bunch of various brands that uh, we handle and we take care of. You know, I mean, we do garments, we do handbags, we do belts. I mean, I mean, you know, we do a lot of various special requests. We've done stuff for Broadway shows, TV shows, you know, actresses that need something fitted to fit a certain way. So, anything is possible. Um, you know, majority of what we're known for is the high-end value of the market. I mean, yes, we don't discriminate. We fix all types of shoes, but we're mostly known for having that delicate hand. We're experienced. We know how the material works. We know, you know, the best glues and the best materials to use in fixing the stuff. And, you know, I mean, when you think about it, we're just helping add more longevity to your item. You know, even though you did spend a certain amount on it, it still needs a certain amount of care as well. You know, it's like anything else. I mean, look, I would say myself, you know, I'd love to buy myself a vintage Porsche, but I don't think I could, I could afford the maintenance. So it's the same thing when you buy an expensive product, you also have to think about the maintenance that comes with it. You know, it's not like you're walking around with $1,000 in your hand. You have $1,000 on your feet. So you have to understand that, you know, you, that, that's money right there, that's value. And it's something that requires a special attention when it's time to get treated. Another thing we also do a lot of is especially preserving the soles, the outsoles. You know, you get that nice, beautiful, light skin sole, has a very touch to it. So that's a natural, raw, unfinished skin. It looks great, it looks beautiful, but once it hits the streets, it's a whole other story. So with the shoes that you brought in to us today, um, thankfully it's a quality made shoe and it's a quality made skin. The first process what we did is we do a deglazing. So basically the shoe itself, the skin before they make the shoe has been tanned. It's also gone through an oil processing and then they put a finish on it via a machine where they buff it. So what we had to do in order to get the dye to penetrate into the skin to give you a more natural look, we had to strip that finish off. So we first start off by stripping off that finish. Give that at least let it dry for an hour. If it's necessary, we might do an extra coat just to make sure. The other thing too we're doing is we're opening the pores. And then after, after that process, once it dries, then we start to do the dyeing. On your shoes, you want to do one pair of brown, but we actually start off with a quarter of in color mixed in with some brown. They're a little, you can't always, you would think you would just start in, but no. Because there's a base color, you want to kill that base color to cover it up, to conceal it. Yes, we could have gone in with just brown, but then we'd have to put in like five, six coats, and then it starts to look black. It doesn't have that nice, rich color. And then once that process is done, we let it dry. Then depending how it looks, you know, well, I will say maybe I need to do an extra coat or you know, maybe if anything, I need to lighten it up a little bit. And then once that step is done, the final step, we just put a little cream on it. We have a special cream that has a pigment in it. Not just the basic cream like over the counter stuff. This has a pigment in it that gives you that nice finishing coat. And then we'll do like a nice little hand glaze. But being you came in with the exotic skin, we're gonna give you some nice highs and lows. Like a nice tone to it. Do a nice, you know, color goes up and down. <laughs> So here in the facility, we have 54 employees. Overall, as a whole company, we're 84. 
Um, and of all the employees we have here, um, you know, we have a lot of different cultures, but majority of them are all Latin. I'd say 99%. <laughs> we, uh, usually it's a lot of Ecuadorians. We start with a lot of Ecuadorians and you know, it's all word of mouth, a lot of families. I have uh, two husbands and wives, I have brothers, sisters. We, you know, we have a small network. We have a father and son. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very family oriented business. And these are people who back in their countries were originally working in factories making goods. You know, we had a lot of them make, making shoes and making handbags. So we're doing repair, which is a little bit different. You know, that requires a little bit of a training, but they already have the hand for it, you know, and they have, they have the passion for it and they have the love for it. There's not much turnover here. Skilled. No, yeah, it's a skilled labor. I mean, you know, you saw yourself from walking around. This is not, we're not operating a sweatshop. You know, compared to a lot of other shops throughout the country, I mean, you know, there's a reason why employees love to come here for work. You know, I compare my business like I compare cars, all right? If you have a Ferrari, if you have a Lamborghini or a nice Porsche, you don't bring it to every garage. You bring it to a specific recommended and for a very good guy. The guy eventually don't do advertising, but he do a good job. So he's known to do a good job. So that's what I wanted to create. It was the persistence I have in myself and the quality that makes me be what I am today. Hmm? I've always worked with my dad, you know, ever since I was 10 years old, you know, starting off in the shop and there was no allowance or anything like that. So, you know, it was straight to work, you know. My dad just didn't raise us to, you know, just, yes, it's good to ask for things, but if you want something, don't be afraid to go out and get it. My senior year of high school, I mean, I was, I was working practically full time. After school, I was at the store, I worked there on weekends, you know, and my friends were always like, hey, you gonna come out and hang out? I was like, nah, I'm gonna work. You know, I was happy to be working, making money. And then, you know, right at 17 and a half, I just went full time. I was working six days a week, 50, you know, 50, 56 hours a week. What I'm happy, proud, is because I get my son, David Mosqueda, succeed me right on this business, do pretty, pretty well. I think I did better than him, but you know, he do pretty well too. <laughs> I'm not really a real shoemaker, for tell you the truth. If I was on the bench myself permanently, I couldn't build what I have exactly. Huh? And that's what I eventually I teach to my son, is to be, you have to be a good director, you have to be a good leader, you have to be a good leader. Is that if you're just an executive, you can't succeed on that basis like what I did, yes. I don't do that much, but when I do something, I do that very well. Mm -hmm. After one day of work, they turned my pimp shoes into posh shoes. Thanks for watching.